On Monday, we arrested a group. We found a print shop in Shabna area in Benghazi city. We found 45,000 Christian books. The foreigners were reportedly printing pamphlets explaining Christianity. The material was mostly directed towards children. But proselytizing in Libya is a criminal offense, punishable by death, according to a law carried over from Muammar Gaddafi's reign. We are a 100% Muslim country. This issue is not negotiable. It's prohibited to proselytize in Libya because it's an entirely Muslim country. The four missionaries are in custody in Benghazi. The group is made up of a Swedish-American, an Egyptian, a South African, and a South Korean. Libyan officials allowed Egyptian detainee Sharif Ramses to speak to the media. He says he was brought here from the moment they arrested him, and that he's been treated respectfully and not abused. Ramses went on to admit the group was in Libya to spread Christianity. An official presence said there were also espionage allegations against him because he refused to meet with anyone from his embassy. Ramsey said he declined because he knew he would get little help from Egypt. And Gary joins us now. He's been to Libya since the revolution and he's just back instantly from other parts of North Africa. And joining us by Skype is Todd Nettleton of Voice of the Martyrs. He's here to talk about the persecution in East Africa. Gentlemen, welcome. Let me start with you, uh, Gary. This country, Libya, yes. liberated by NATO, and now we have this issue of preaching the gospel. What's going on here? Well, it's not a democracy, and these laws are holdovers from the Muammar Gaddafi uh, period. They haven't changed anything. They're still on the books. They're still going by them. You have people saying this is an Islamic country, yeah. even though we thought what we were doing, and the French as well, was creating a new democracy. It's not so. Mm. And it's interesting that they were they were showing showcasing all the paraphernalia that they had caught and even interviewed one of the Egyptian uh, uh, contacts. Yeah, Ramses. Uh, I had met with him a year and a half ago when I was in Libya, and he's just a committed uh, Christian who wants to share the gospel. He's not a spy at all. He's just there trying to share Jesus with uh, the Libyans, mm. and many are very receptive, but they're trying to stop it, obviously. You are just back from Mali, where the government and French forces, forces have been fighting uh, Islamist uh, uh, fundamentalists. Yes. Do you see what's going on in in Libya as an as an outgrowth that this that this radical Islamist support is growing in this particular part of the world? Well, in Mali, their resistance movement or the anti-government movement started with the Tuareg people, mm -hmm. and Muammar Gaddafi used many of them because they're known as good fighters. Provided them with weapons. He used them trying to fight against the revolution in Libya. Yeah. So after that uh, was finished. They moved into their own area in Mali and uh, tried to take over the north and, and claim it as an independent state. But then they were co-opted uh, by Al-Qaeda and the Islamic Maghreb yeah. and then also another group called Ansar Dine. And so you have all these rebel groups mm -hmm. uh, fighting against the government there, and that's why the French came and, in. And obviously, you know, Libya is awash with weapons, and all these weapons and the are going back. the pipeline's still flowing exactly. all over Africa. Uh, Todd, let me just go to you. Let me bring you into this conversation. You know, we're seeing now the Islamic fundamentalist, uh, the, their influence is spreading to East Africa, notably Kenya and now Tanzania. Tell us quickly what's going on there. Well, we've seen over the last two weeks, two different Christian leaders have been killed in Tanzania. One was an Assembly of God pastor who was killed by a mob in the northwest part of the country. The other was a Catholic priest who was shot outside his church on the way to Sunday morning services. The interesting thing in the second case, the group that has taken responsibility for killing the priest uh, praised their fighters, which had killed him, but also mentioned that they had had training in Somalia. So hmm. clearly a link with what's going on in Somalia and potentially a link with Al-Shabaab with these attacks in Tanzania. Uh, Todd, this is terrible to see what's going on in East Africa. I was born in Tanzania, very familiar with this part of the continent. These are majority Christian uh, nations. Uh, how are, how's the church responding uh, to the situation? Well, as you say, they are majority Christian nations, and so uh, I think the church is a little bit surprised mm -hmm. to see these kinds of attacks, uh, and there is some fear there. There is some fear of what does this mean for our churches, what does this mean for our country. Uh, one of the things we can pray for is for the Christian response, and uh, particularly up in the Northwest, there is a lot of animosity right now between Christians and Muslims. Uh, we need to pray that the Christians will be able to forgive and respond with love 
of instead of responding with acts of vengeance. Yeah, that's good. Uh, uh, Gary, Africa is the epicenter of the explosion of Christianity, yes. no doubt about it. Yes. But there are these pockets, Libya, Tunisia, Algeria, Sudan, Egypt, now in places like East Africa, Kenya, Tanzania. Do you get a sense that there is a concerted effort, a push by the Islamists, or Christianity still continues there, to grow? There is, and yeah. don't forget Nigeria as well, That's the right. tax yeah. against churches in Nigeria. It's spreading throughout Africa. The goal is to Islamize the entire continent mm -hmm. and create a caliphate there. Todd, do you see this coming to a head on the continent of Africa? Uh, Gary mentioned Nigeria. You know, you talk about North and South Nigeria, and there is a different religious makeup. Uh, I think we see that, and we've seen it in Sudan. I think we'll start to see it in some other places as well. I, I'm told uh, there are significant parts of Tanzania that are almost 100% Muslim. Uh, so those areas, we probably will see more persecution, uh, but then I think you'll see it expand out from those areas into other parts of the country and other parts of East Africa as well. Okay, terrific. Todd Nettleton with the awesome group, The Voice of the Martyrs, and my colleague Gary Lane, just back from, from the region. Gentlemen, thank you, as always, for your insights.